exploring so many different archives around the world. And I think we ended up using 65 different archives uh, in the film. And, and probably there were another 30 or 40 that we, we discarded uh, in the end. Um, and because Pele is such a global figure, so many countries have. Hi, Ben. Hi, David. I just want to thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure to be talking to you both and to talk about Pelé. I was born in Brazil. I grew up with him. And I know there is there was a Brazil before Pelé and a Brazil after Pelé, which thank, thanks for to him that we everybody knows about soccer, about football, right? So I just want to know if you guys, any of you have any connections to, to Brazil and, and, and why, if not, why did you pick Pelé and why he's so important? Uh, so I, I, uh, I speak Portuguese and uh, I lived in Brazil for three years in my early 20s. Um, so I guess I've always had that cultural connection to the country. Uh, I, I originally lived in Fortaleza, so I, I spoke Cearense before I spoke um, Portuguese. Uh, and um, I've always loved Brazilian football um, and I've sort of worked on a few productions involving Brazilian football over the years. Um, I recently executive produced um, something on Amazon around the Brazilian national team. Um, so that's, that's my connection and then Ben and I tend to work together on projects. Um, and, and I think it, it came of a conversation where we were, you know, we, 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 we were involved in sports documentaries and there are only so many stories to tell. And I know, you know, Pele has done various films and various books throughout his career, but we both felt there's never really been a definitive Pele film that's gone to a global audience. Um, there's been a lot of stuff that's just been Brazil only or it hasn't felt cinematic enough. And we wanted, a, we wanted to create the definitive documentary on Pele and to really give kind of anyone who didn't see him this context as to why he became Pelé, how he became this myth. And because I think it's a subject people often have a slightly superficial knowledge of and, and we wanted to fill in some of those gaps really. I think that's it. We wanted to provide the, the context behind his story, the meaning behind his story, which I think, I think as Dave said, I think everyone thinks they know the story and, every, and everyone does have a very superficial knowledge of it. Uh, but we, want, we wanted to dig deeper and we wanted to also give it the visual treatment, the cinematic treatment, which I don't think it's ever had before. Also, he's 80 now, so he's feeling much more reflective, I think. So he's in this period that in the film that we zoom into between 58 and 70, uh, we had to really keep in mind that, you know, this is stuff he's spoken about before, but it's also stuff that was, you know, the most recent stuff in the film happened 50 years ago. Uh, and Pele is someone that's been interviewed millions of times and had a microphone pushed in his face every time he steps out the door. So part of our job, uh, the reason why we thought it was important was to go through those answers, go through the old stories, but then try and get something deeper to explain to him, we don't want the same old story. We want to do something different here, something more, tell the story in a more cinematic way, something that would be better for the film, but also better for him and better for his, better for his legacy. Yes, I think you, what you guys did was something that extraordinary. And I think it was very, you took out of him a lot of like like different answers and different point of views of what really happened back then. It's amazing. I just want to know how you guys are able to do that with him. I think he has all the answers on his mind already, ready to answer. And I just want to know how was that the, the approach to, to get him to do that? I, I, you're right. I think he's done, you know, ever since he's been 17, he's had a microphone in his face. Um, he's done thousands of interviews. Um, obviously over the years, those interviews, but he, he sort of learns the stories that people like. And then I think, you know, we're dealing with memories from 50, 60, 70 years ago. And I think uh, Pele probably creates some of the myths himself. And, and he often deals with memories of memories rather than genuine memories. So, uh, you know, he has these stock answers and part of our challenge was to try and go, be, as you said, go beyond those normal answers. Um, and I think probably the secret is just time. We, we had a lot of time with him. You know, we had probably eight or nine days over a period of 18 months. Um, and we, you know, some days we'd just, we'd get the, the standard Pele interview. Other days we might get a little bit more. Other days we'd, we'd get nothing. So it was just pushing and pushing and recognizing when there was a good day, then we'd, we'd push a bit harder. And I, I would say, I think he probably just got tired of us by the end. 
Um, <laughs> but but we definitely noticed, and, and when we came to editing it down, we were really trying to get um, the viewer to see a much more reflective side of Pele, not necessarily the kind of usual, the big smiles. And I think there's a line at the end of the film where he talks about the greatest victory being relief. Yeah. Uh, and it's such a telling line, because I think you're really expecting Pele to say it was all about joy and celebration and happiness, um, which I think it would be his normal answer. And, and for him to say relief, and you really understood all the stress and the burdens of having a, a whole country's expectations on your shoulders and, and what 1970 in particular meant to him. That's, I think that's why we made the film in the style we did. We thought it was really important to get him on camera uh, for an extended amount of period so that we so that we could get to the new stuff, get to some genuine stuff, try and transport him back there emotionally. And that's why we did these certain other things like the barbecue, like the shoeshine box, like the uh, him watching 66. Anything we could do to get him connecting in a fresh way to, to, to some of the old stories. Uh, and we also wanted the audience to be able to sit with him and feel connected to him. So that's why it was so important to us that he was talking Brazilian Portuguese in his native language. Uh, and that's why it was so important that everyone else in the film is talking uh, Portuguese. We really wanted to create the feeling that you're living or reliving the story with the people who were there when it actually happened uh, and people that had personal relationships, personal relationships with him and a relevant connection to Pelé at the time that the story is taking place. <laughs> I think I, I never, I never uh, saw him and I asked my dad to watch the documentary yesterday <laughs> and then I asked him, have you ever saw, like, seen uh, Pelé like that, like so, I don't know, he was so relieved <laughs> and also so emotional talking about yeah. everything that he go through and then you guys did an amazing job. So let's talk a little bit about the archive footage, which is amazing. I just got, I, just to talk about, I got goosebumps because it's so real, it's so, so perfect. How was like this process, like to, to find the perfect, the perfect images, the perfect moments and to bring that cinematic <laughs> like feel to, to the documentary? It, it, it takes a long time to find it. You know, we had we had uh, an archive researcher out in Brazil and one in the UK uh, exploring so many different archives around the world. And I think we ended up using 65 different archives uh, in the film. And, and probably there were another 30 or 40 that we, we discarded uh, in the end. Um, and because Pele is such a global figure, so many countries have different archive of him. So we were turning over every stone trying to find it. And you're dealing with footage from you know, the 1950s and 1960s, it's, it, and, and the quality it, it will always vary. But I think the exciting thing for us was 1970, even though that footage has been seen so many times, um, it's just so vivid and so beautiful and, and looks like it was filmed yesterday. I think, you know, there's a, as Dave said, it was a, a, a lot of the work is churning through the stuff and there's, there's, a, there's a crazy amount of footage. But I, also, I guess there's also a crazy amount of a certain type of footage. You know, we could have made a 10 hour film of Pele getting on and off planes, because uh, there's, there's a lot of that. Uh, and it's not the 80s or 90s, as we said, with the camcorder stuff. Uh, so there's good things about it that it's usually shot on film and looks pretty beautiful, but there's bad things about it that it's always quite short clips, usually without sound. Uh, so we definitely needed to be led by the archive on something like this. And, you know, there's no point of us, um, no point in us sitting down and writing a scene about Pele quitting playing for Brazil after 66 if we can't actually show it. So at the same time, you've got to impose a structure on the film to try and make an entertaining story. So as Dave said, things like 70 really pop out and then they become the cornerstones of the story we're trying to tell. So once we had 70 in place as the climax, it was just a case of finding the archive that fitted in with that, with that structure and a case of trying to make sure that the audience arrive in 70 emotionally invested in the story and a, in Pelé and what's about to happen. Uh, and so that way, the good archive jumps out at you. But yeah, th there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to go through. São 14 minutos para que pela primeira vez. Também é feito, vai lá, Pelé. É O que restava mesmo nessa tristeza foi futebol. 
era exatamente aonde o brasileiro se extravasava. E com esse líder ídolo é, inigualável que é o Pelé. O estádio quer Pelé, o maior estádio do mundo, quer o maior jogador do mundo. Yeah, no, it's, it's beautiful. It's it's amazing. Like, and I and I bet it was really difficult to edit, and and to find those right moments. I was like, oh my god, I can't, I can't believe it. Like, it's 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 beautiful. And uh, also, there were some other moments there that he was with the former teammates from from Santos. Those moments are amazing. I just love it. I think it's like so good to see all of them over there together. How did, how did you guys decide to to add these little moments? regular moments of uh, his life into the documentary. I think it was important. We, I think over the years, we kind of forget, uh, I think for any footballer, when they stop playing, we forget they're a footballer. And I think Pele also becomes kind of a, a slightly establishment figure. We're, we're accustomed to seeing Pele at a World Cup draw or a function where he's a guest of honor. So he's often in a suit um, and he's around other important people. And we forget that there's actually a guy at home who's in his t-shirt and shorts and flip-flops watching football on the TV like anyone else. And I think it was so important for us to try and get that Santos team back together and, and show Pele as one of the boys, one of the group. Um, and it was really touching. It was a really special day that we, you know, we said to each other, wow, you know, this is probably the greatest club side of all time. Sat there just chatting, all the memories start coming back after a while. And, and you really felt these guys were so happy. They, they were almost transported back in time to when they were on boats and planes and sharing hotels and playing in uh, you know Egypt or in in Serbia or wherever around the world um and and no it was it was a lovely moment and i know um pele's team his small team around him said to us that that was probably his favorite day of 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 um of his whole year uh, getting getting it getting everyone together é que quando o Santos ia discussionar na, na, nas nossas discussões, o Santos era campeão na Itália, campeão na Alemanha, campeão na Europa, todo ano, e eles ficavam falando do Brasil. E ninguém sabia o que era o Brasil. Você se lembra de uma que nós jogamos na, na Europa, a gente foi, e o Lula falou para mim, pô, o Pelé está machucado. Ele falou, você quer saber uma coisa? Como esse ataque do Santos, do Doval, tudo é, tudo é crioulo mesmo, tudo é neguinho mesmo. Doval, você vai entrar com o número 10, eles não vão saber quem é o Pelé. Aí, eu joguei com a 10, eu me lembro que eu entrei com a 10, daqui a pouquinho, todo mundo viu que não era o Pelé, todo mundo que você quer dizer lá, Pelé, Pelé, Pelé. Aí você entrou, mas meio machucado mesmo, jogou. Eu acho que os caras falaram assim, Pô, o Pelé era tão bonitinho, tão ah, bonito, para ver se... Não vem, não vem, não vai dizer que o Pelé era bonito. Vai dizer que o Pelé era bonitinho, o que é que é, não vem, não. Tem algum momento, 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 algum thing on his his like history or that part of the those years that you guys were unable to to add not really i think you know there's 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 so much great stuff you know there's there's obviously there's you know it's always tempting uh to go into the the new york years the studio 54 years you know there's always temptations there there is great there's lots of funny adverts that he did in the 70s there's lots of funny videos he did music videos there's other things which are kind of you, you know make you laugh or make you smile or and make you realize kind of how famous he was um but I, as we said you know uh, i don't a film is not uh, a film is not like a novel it's much more like a short story so it was always really important to us to just choose this period lock in on this period uh and try and show his most definitive moments in a cinematic way so no i think i think once we once we decided that, that was the structure uh i think it was quite easy to let other stuff slip away because we knew what we we knew what was important to the story we were trying to tell yeah, it, yeah. it's quite funny the, the process of making a film you know you you start with probably like an eight hour film and I, I think at one stage we had a whole hour just on the santos years yeah and and, and then we then we, we sort of watched it back and it just didn't as, as interesting as it was and as fascinating as it was it just didn't really fit the film we were telling and and and, and it didn't feel lively enough or it didn't didn't have the narrative push so yeah you 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 end you cut so much more than people ever imagine you do um and then so much of that then just goes goes away because 
as Ben said, you're trying to create this kind of very short, tight story that make, has a has a coherent beginning, middle, and an end. Yeah, I just want to point it out as well that you guys use Brazilians to do the music, the, the original score, like yeah. uh, Antonio Pinto, Gabriel, and yeah. that's amazing. Like, why did you guys decide? Of course, he's a Brazilian, Pelé is Brazilian, and, but why did you decide to to work with with them? I think Antonio is the, the, the best in Brazil. So, um, you know, it, it's a very global, as much as, you know, we're two British directors, you know, we, we, it's a very global production. We had an amazing Brazilian researcher, Brazilian production team, an Australian uh, cinematographer. Um, but I think when it came to the music, music is so Brazilian, you know, it's the soul of Brazil. We, we really wanted a Brazilian composer and there's no one better than um, Antonio. Though we did say, you know, when we first chatted with him, we all agreed, no samba, no stereotypes. We just want to make a beautiful traditional score, but uh, you know that they're so good at bringing in, incorporating Brazilian instruments and giving it that sound that you know it's still Brazilian without being this kind of horrible sort of stereotypical uh, Brazilian soundtrack, which we wanted to avoid at all costs. And it's crazy. It's crazy what music can do. You know, you 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 get some beautiful sports footage like we have it in 1970, but you put some of Antonio's music on, and it suddenly it becomes epic suddenly it becomes really cinematic and you know there's a uh, however tired I am whenever I get to the ending and the fans run onto the pitch and Antonio's score really kicks steps up a notch it gets me every time Antonio he does always does really great music and and I think you guys pick the the right person to do it <laughs> and okay. and from from this from this documentary I are you already working in your next project you guys have anything else coming up that you can talk about. Uh, we, yeah, we're, we're, we are working on another project uh, coming up on, on football, but that's what we can say, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we, we will have another project coming out next year. Perfect. And and, and David, you, you, you spent some time in Brazil. What is your favorite uh, food over there? <laughs> uh, Biology dois, every time. Biology dois. I love a good Biology dois with a carne de sol. <laughs> yeah, carne de sol. That's Good. Did you try our food, Ben? Yes, every, every, <laughs> we were eating very, very Brazilian almost, but I think probably quite, um, uh, you know, the, the steak and the vinaigrette became my every night almost. Uh, and the, uh, uh, That's great. That's awesome. You know what is funny as well? Because I share the same birthday uh, as Pelé. I, oh, yeah. I, I'm also October 23rd. <laughs> and I Excellent. also have Nascimento on my last name. So no way. <laughs> it's oh, so it's funny. It's, 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 there you go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just want to thank you, Ben, David, so much for your time. It's a pleasure to talk to you both. A lot of success, and everybody's already watching Pele, the documentary. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks for having us. Bye. 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 If you like this video, don't forget to comment, to like, and subscribe to our channel right here. <laughs>